Welcome to another screencast. This is about metamorphic rocks. We're looking at page 7 in the Earth Science Reference Table. And at first glance, you can see it's similar but different to the way that igneous rocks are set up and the sedimentary rocks are set up. So basically, we have two major types of metamorphic rocks. We have foliated metamorphic rocks, and we have non-foliated metamorphic rocks. Those are the two major categories of them. It also, like others, notes texture, texture being foliated or non-foliated. Within the foliated category, you have mineral alignment and banding. Essentially, we're going to use them the same, as synonymous with one another in class, especially in rock identification. For your purposes, if you see mineral alignment or banding, you know that you have a metamorphic rock and that you don't have an igneous or sedimentary rock. And within that, you also have grain size, and it could vary from fine, fine to medium, medium to coarse, and then vary within the non-foliated as well, as well as composition is indicated, what type of metamorphism occurs. That's also indicated there. Um, you can see that it says regional. And as this arrow comes down, what winds up happening is that heat and pressure is increasing as we move from, let's say, a slate to a phyllite to a schist to a gneiss. So we're getting a higher grade of metamorphism. So regional metamorphism occurs with things like mountain building. Continents collide into one another, and the mountains get created, which we'll talk about. We'll talk about dynamic crust. So that would be an example of regional metamorphism. It tends to affect a larger area, and it tends to affect the rock more than something like contact metamorphism that you'll find over here find over here contact metamorphism. I apologize, I did the wrong thing. Do the highlighter, which is just by heat. So the magma, hot liquid magma, uh, just touching the rock, changing the rock um, on a much smaller level and not as much as regional metamorphism would, would. Then you have comments. So the comments section, you can see that slate is a low grade metamorphism of shale and something like nice is a high-grade metamorphism. Again, regional metamorphism increases as we go from slate to phyllite to schist to gneiss. And then you have the rock name and the map symbol for it, which it could be seen on a diagram. And within that, we have composition, which tells you what it's made of. We're going to skip the next page because this little doohickey gets in the way. We're going to start with slate. So uh, these are pictures of slate that you can see. And if I look, the rock name is slate. The map symbol looks like that. It's low-grade metamorphism of shale. And it's composed of, if you look, it's a fine grain that's composed of just mica. It has mineral alignment, or the bigger category is foliated. You're always better off saying foliated than mineral alignment, because foliated captures mineral alignment and banding. That's what slate looks like. You might see them in your backyard, um, landscaping rocks, or even a uh, path, perhaps, or something like that. Next one on the list is phyllite. Um, not as obvious to see the foliation, perhaps, um, in the sample shown here. But again, if you take a look over phyllite, it's foliation surfaces, shiny form, uh, microscopic microcrystals. You can see that these things are coming. And then if you take a look, it's regional metamorphism again. Again, more regional metamorphism than slate, but not as much as everybody's favorite schist. If I read across, I can see that it's made up of garnet, amphibole, feldspar, quartz, and mica, and it's fine to medium grain, and it also has mineral alignment. So that would be phyllite. Everybody's favorite, schist. So you can see that it actually has some, schist might have pyroxene in it, some might not. It has garnet, amphibole, feldspar, quartz, and mica. You can see the foliation in it that occurs, right? Um, you can see the different layers. Again, by a lot more met, uh, regional metamorphism than slate, and more than phyllite, but not as much as nice. So you can see that the rock is affected more because it's a higher grade metamorphism. So if I take a look at the last one in the foliated category, and that's nice, that represents banding. But again, foliated captures banding, medium to coarse grain. It contains mica, quartz, feldspar, amphibole, garnet, and pyroxene. So you can see that this is a, a a piece of nice over here, and you can see the alternating light and dark banding that occurs, alternating light and dark banding that occurs. Pretty cool stuff. Um, and if we were to take a look at how nice happens, if you take granite and you apply heat and pressure to it, you would actually wind up with nice. 
So you can see the granite isn't layered. It doesn't have alternate light and dark bands. It's not banding. It's not mineral alignment. And then instead, heat and pressure gives you that kind of interesting and fun. Now we're into the non-foliated section. We look at anthracite coal. And you can see in the comments, it tells you metamorphism of bituminous coal, which is a type of sedimentary rock. And it's done by regional, like mountain building. Um, and the composition of it is just carbon. It has a fine grain, and it's non-foliated. And if you take bituminous coal, you apply heat and pressure, you'll get your anthracite coal. Visually, you might not be able to tell a difference between the two. Um, you might be able to feel a difference because the density, the uh, metamorphic rocks are denser than their parent rock that, or their origin rock. And now um, going down, we have horn fells. And now look, it's contact metamorphism. So the rock isn't as affected as a regional rock, um, but you're still getting that contact from the magma that's there. And it's, look, it even tells you right here, various rocks. So various rocks can become horn fells after uh, heat is applied from maybe a magma plume uprising from the, uh, from the uh, mantle of the earth and touching that rock by contact, um, changing it, uh, changing its mineral alignment there and making it denser. And quartzite, metamorphism of quartz sandstone. So quartz sandstone is a sedimentary rock. You apply heat and pressure and you wind up getting quartzite. Its composition is primarily quartz. And marble, which you all probably have experiences with. In Washington, D.C., you saw a lot of marble. Um, you could see metamorphism of limestone and dolostone. It could be regional or contact, and so could quartzite, by the way. Kind of skipped over that. Um, and its composition is calcite and or dolomite, which will become important later on. It has a fine to coarse grain size, and it's also non-foliated. And there's a picture of limestone. If you apply heat and pressure to it, you can get marble. From marble, we end on metaconglomerate, which sounds like an evil superhero. Oh no, metaconglomerate's going to attack. It sounds like some kind of a robot or something. Um, you're going to get distortion from the heat and pressure, which could be regional or contact alone, um, various minerals. Generally, conglomerate becomes metaconglomerate. Those kind of make sense, right? So you can see the C in conglomerate got cut off over here. I don't know if I could move this out. We apply heat and pressure. Back to my highlighter. And we get the metaconglomerate that happens. It's a type of metamorphism. So here is showing you con conglomerate down below, and then there's the metaconglomerate right over there. You can see that they're elongated from the heat and pressure that happens. What metamorphic rock will react with acid? So this is a very specific question that incorporates previous thermal material or mastered material in your case, and that is the properties of common minerals. So if I take a closer look at properties of common minerals, which is page 16 in the Earth Science Reference Table, and if I take a look down at the distinguishing characteristics, which is right over here, and if I take a look and zoom in, um, and again, this thing got cut off a tiny bit, I can see that calcite bubbles with acid, which means reacts, and dolomite bubbles with acid. So if I go revisit the original question, I'm basically looking for a metamorphic rock that has limestone and dolostone in it, which is, come on, use your psychic powers and will the mouse over to highlight the correct answer. Metamorphism of, oh, limestone or dolostone, and our answer would be marble. How exciting. There are other various questions that exist, too, about metamorphic rocks, which we will explore in good time. So um, this gives you an idea of foliation that happens. You can see more foliation, alternating light and dark bands. That's the characteristic of a metamorphic rock. You can see the metamorphic rock there. And we're pretty much at the end, so now you can go sing, sing a song. So uh, very unusual, we actually have examples of people singing without sound, though. So check it out. They just finished watching the screencast on metamorphic rocks, and they couldn't contain their excitement. So here you go for your viewing pleasure. And dancing and singing, and oh, that's a hot curling iron. You probably don't want to pretend it's a microphone, just saying. Great reaction, though. Good dance moves. 
Yeah, that looks like it hurt. I wouldn't recommend singing that song, and what would a screencast be without your favorite characters? Mounted police, Canadian mounted police, let this be a lesson to all you kids out there. Never use a curling iron as a microphone with your friends. And of course, our astronaut has to have his words of wisdom as well. That's why I wear this spacesuit and gloves at all times. He obviously had a running with a curling iron. So that is the end of the screencast. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and hopefully you learned something from it. Have a great day, or night, or weekend, or Arbor Day, whatever it happens to be.